Faisal Khan. Today we are going to look at how stable coins are used in cross-border payments. Uh, this is a multi-part series. I'll probably end up doing about six or seven videos. So today we will look at stable, to stable coin to stable coin, stable coin to fiat payout, fiat to stable coin, how you can use you know fiat to stable coin to a different stable coin back to fiat. And then more particularly, this is the one that everyone is sort of interested in. I'll, I'll show you a brief of this, but it's not complete. But in this video, you'll probably see a little trailer, if you will, on how um, you know stable coins can be used for money transfer operators and banks that cannot hold on or cannot deal with stable coins or crypto. Anyways, just let's get started. So the first very simple, basic example that I can hope I can fit it in the screen, here it is, is a person-to-person -person stable coin transfer. So let's say there's Aisha and she wants to send a hundred dollars worth of uh, coins to Juliet, and you know, so how does Aisha actually get the stable coins? Well, there's you know she could sell it or exchange it for products or services. Uh, she could go and buy it from a crypto exchange, or she could mint or mine some other coins and then convert it into a stable coin and exchange it. That's how she gets it in her wallet. And it's very simple. Once she gets it in her wallet, all she needs to know is Juliet's address. And you know, when she knows Juliet's address, she can transfer. It it would probably be done over some very particular blockchain, and eventually, you know, she, uh, Juliet would get the money. And what can Juliet do with it? Well, obviously, she can send it to someone else. She can sell it back to the crypto exchange and buy some other crypto, or convert it back into fiat, or she can, you know, use it elsewhere on the internet and exchange it for products and services. So this is a very simple example that everyone can uh, knows and you know can use, or it rather does use for their personal uh, you know, a, a transactions. So how does it look like when we do this in a business environment? So in a business environment, it really isn't anything different. Let's see again, I can fit it here. Yeah, I can fit it. And in the business environment, what we are looking at is, um, again, the same way you can, a business can buy, you know, they can uh, uh, exchange products, uh, you know, or for exchange coins for products and services. They could buy it from a crypto exchange. They could mint mine some other coins and exchange them back into a stable. Um, and again, you know, there would be a, a blockchain of choice that would be used, you know, from, you, you could send the stables over, let's say Binance or Ethereum or whatever blockchain that you may be using and you'd have a wallet address and your counterparty would also have a wallet address. Business A would send to business B and they receive it. And like I said, business, you know, uh, the, the one that receiving it receives it can do a couple of things with it. They can exchange it for products and services. They can further send this coin because it's like a dollar or whatever they want to do to someone else. They can go to a crypto exchange and sell the stable coin and get fiat back or they could send it to someone else. And uh, this is how typically businesses are using it. Uh, one of the biggest issues over here is that when you are getting stable coins from someone else or from an exchange, etc., you really don't know on the blockchain that if the wallet that you're getting from is a trusted wallet, is a correct wallet, is not a dirty wallet, it's not a, it's not some person who's nefarious that you're dealing with, etc. And that is something very important. But businesses tend to sort of ignore that. They say they're happy with the transaction. They say, hey, listen, I got the coins. I'm going to send them across. End of story. So the, the, the part that I'm not showing right now, but I will shed some light on it, is how does it work in a very complex environment. And I'm not going to show this right now, but I'm going to do a separate video for it. And this is sort of how a money services business would use it, but I'll come to that. But let's go back to this example that we were doing previously and look at it. And you say, okay, so... You know, a business doesn't necessarily have to have a stable coin in order to send it. A business could, you know, for example, have dollars and they could just say, hey, you know what? Uh, I have dollars. I don't know how to get a stable coin. And, you know, they could be directed to an exchange and go buy stable coins from there and so forth and then push it out. Uh, sometimes a business, you know, just doesn't want to deal in stable coins. They say, hey, listen, you know, I don't know this part. I don't know. I don't know what to do with stable coins. And again, you know, they could receive a stable coin and they could exchange it for a product or service or back into fiat. So there are many variations. 
the part that it's a, a the 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 good part is that it's able to go across instantly now remember a stable coin is still an iou it's it doesn't mean you have the money yet the fiat yet what it means is if you were to cash this out then it will come to you because you are holding the stable coin and it's as good as think of it as a certified check and you know that if you take this to the bank and get it cashed you will get the money and that's how it typically behaves so these are the two examples i've talked about or rather three examples you know on stable coin is it you know how does it work from person to person business to business but the fun part is going to be in the next video which is going to be stable coins to fiat for money transfer operators and banks that cannot hold crypto. So for example, if you are an MTO in you know, a part of the world or you're a bank where let's say crypto is not defined or is prohibited, how do you then deal with stable coins and how, how can you structure it? How do you architect a solution? And that's the one we are going to do later. Anyway, till next time, this is Faisal Khan signing out. As always, if you have a question or a comment, put it in the comments below and I'll speak to you soon.